Ultimately, the Florida Supreme Court ruled that the sheriff threatening vendors with fines for violating the laws on obscene material was unconstitutional and rap music was once again free. <laughs> for a- <laughs> Yes! <laughs> I was so worried! Just before we get started today, I do want to tell you about our fantastic sponsor, Keeps, a subscription service that helps men keep their hair, uh, assuming they haven't lost it all already. Hello! Look, Keeps provides expert recommended hair loss treatments, which are clinically proven to treat the symptoms of hair loss. Look, unfortunately for me, I've said it before, my hair is, uh, it has departed my head a long time ago, and it's not coming back, but uh, you don't have to be like me, because now something like Keeps exists. My only problem with Keeps is why didn't they get started sooner? Because then I'd have my glorious hair still. It's delivered direct to your door. There are no awkward doctor visits. It's easy to use at home. And also, in addition to all of those benefits, also cheaper than a pharmacy. They say here it's typically half the price. Why would you do it the regular way? Why? There is no reason. All Keeps plans come from a licensed medical provider and you get support 24-7 uh, a year. Unlimited free access to a dedicated medical provider, which is brilliant. Look, if you want to promote new hair growth or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps has you covered. Also, they've got an award-winning all-natural thickening shampoo and conditioner system. Honestly, like well, before my hair fell out, it was, uh, it got, pr it, it happened so fast. It was so glorious. And then it became thin. And then it just went, whoosh, and then I shaved it off. Uh, it was so thin at the end, on, on top and at the front. And this thickening thing is exactly what I needed. Look, hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your order, go to keeps.com slash brainblaze or click the link in the description. That's K E E P S dot com slash brainblaze. And now today's video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Brain Blaze. I'm your host, Simon. I'm here. One of my writers, in this case, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Writes me a script. I'm going to read it. And uh, Sam, a wonderful video editor, is going to add in some, uh, some memes and stuff like that. Let's just jump in. What are we talking about? The man dis Jack Thompson, the man disbarred over video games. I feel like I vaguely heard of this. Kevin just, I didn't pitch this to Kevin, as sometimes happens. Kevin sent it to me. Um, but I feel like I know about this. It's like some lawyer who got pissed off with video games. He ended up getting disbarred for, like, lying or some shit like that. <laughs> Don't lie. Which is weird, right? Because you're like lawyers. I mean, look, look, look. There's a lot of guilty people out there, aren't there? And you as a lawyer, you got to be sometimes like, I know this motherfucker's guilty. You know. And then you're into court and you're like, I believe he is innocent. <laughs> 100%. Right? And, like, lying lawyers is kind of like a, a joke. But I, I don't know. Let's carry on. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Did you know that you have rights? I mean, there's a big difference between lying and perjury, though. Right. <laughs> One is under oath. <laughs> don't lie under that. As I, unless, the, as I always say, I'm not going to say that because, I don't know, you don't want to like tell people to lie <laughs> under oath. But look, 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 look. If you're a serial killer and you've been serial killing and then they're like, you got to tell the truth, don't. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> not legal advice. <laughs> Just a joke. It's a joke! Casual gamers may not have ever heard the name Jack Thompson, but for anyone who cons has consumed online video game news in the early 2000s, the name was unavoidable. I believe Danny also mentioned him briefly once, so maybe that's why I've heard of him, because I read Danny's words. Danny's mother, I see. You guys know that. You've been here before, probably, according to my analytics. So there's probably at least some hints of recognition of the name among everybody watching this video. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, there was a massive war on video games, like so many things before. Video games were the tool of the devil. <laughs> oh god, here we go. I don't know, like, I think I shared this story before. One of the video games I played when I was young was uh, Doom, which is like... It, it, do video games still have like age ratings on the front? They used to have it in the UK, like movies. So they'd be like 12, 15, 18, and then like PG and U, like for kids. And I think like Doom was, I'm pretty sure it was an 18 rated game. And for some reason, even though my parents never let me saw, like, see like old movies and stuff, like, my parents didn't let me watch Power Rangers because they thought it was too violent. But they're like, yeah, you, you could play Doom. And I'm like, what, the game where I like chainsaw zombies? And they're like, yeah, that's fine. Didn't really get that. It was quite a weird decision. But okay. And for some reason, Doom came on two discs. There was so much killing to do. Or something like that. It was on PlayStation. They were murder simulators designed to desensitize children, desensitize children to sex and violence. <laughs> <laughs> the murder simulator that desensitizes children to sex. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. And turn them into mindless killing machines. None of that is at all true, but in the mind of Jack Thompson, it was not only true, but it was the most dangerous thing in America. Old Jack, chill the f out. 
Chill out, Jack. It's not happening. Anyone who tried to call him a lunatic was accused of violating his First Amendment right of freedom of religion, as his convictions were based on his strong Christian beliefs. Jack, stop smoking so much crack. Jack, smoking the crack was synonymous, allegedly. In a stunning turn of events, a superhero is being sued. Was synonymous with the war against obscene video games. He could be seen on 60 Minutes or CNN talking about the danger video games posed to American children. He was utterly bat insane. But media outlets wanted ratings and didn't really understand the issue at hand, so they gave him a platform. This is what made Jack dangerous. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, people are always like, Oh, I have a right to a platform. I should be able to... Like, right now, you probably won't see this for, like, a while because I've got, like, a queue of, like, 11 brain blazers to recall. I was off sick last week and the week before. And, like, my kids start, started school. It's like living in a fucking bio Pripyat germ Soviet Union germ factory. Like, every week they come like... It's like, why? Why do I lose sick again? I lost my voice for the first time ever for a week. Then I had like some horrible colds where I was like in bed and even thinking about that colds, I'm like, oh, that was rough. Jesus, and I'm still all like, why? Ew! Ew! What the fuck? What was I talking about? Oh yeah, now people like, are like, no, I need a platform. I deserve a platform. I should be able to say whatever the fuck you, I want. It's like, like Kanye West on his anti-Semitic tirades and it's like, bro, and all the other crazy shit. He said, it's like, bro, no, you shouldn't have that. Honestly, you should just be like locked away in a box somewhere, to be honest. Just like, just send him out into the forest and bury him in the grounds. Not like kill him, just put him underground in a little box so we don't have to listen to him. Like, that'll be a real deplatforming. I'm like pro, like, hardcore deplatforming, where you get people, you put them in little boxes in the forest and just feed them berries. Like, <laughs> I don't know where the berries came from, but that's that's because I'm not an American. I don't believe in this like unlimited freedom of speech. That, it's like, what is that? No, you shouldn't have that. Especially Hitler. Because there are crazy people. De despite decades as a lawyer, he was absolutely harmless in court. It was the media attention and the amount of noise that this buffoon was allowed to create that gave him his real power, or at the very least, the power he perceived himself as having. But who exactly was Jack, and how did this vendetta against the video game industry play out? Well, spoiler alert from the title. Oh yeah, because we said in the title that he doesn't need to lose his law license or something. But it ends with him being disbarred. Boom, there you go. Thank you so much for wasting my motherfucking time. Of course, America is filled with shitty lawyers and frivolous lawsuits, so let's take a look at exactly what it takes to get disbarred. I'm playing the role of Batman. I think it takes a lot to get disbarred. Like, because that's taken away someone's career. I've been re-watching, um... Oh, God, what's that show? It's, it's got to, like, lost. It's like, dude, it's a one-word show. Like, from uh, the early 2000s or whatever, because I saw a YouTube video and some dude was like, it's actually brilliant. And I was like, wasn't the end of this? And he's like, no, it's not. Oh, okay, I'll give it another crack. I'm watching, my wife's never seen it, so we're watching it for the first time. And uh, enjoying the shit. Why am I talking about this? Oh, because we're just at the episode where uh, Jack's dad is about to lose his... It, I mean, he kills someone. He ch shows up to the operating room as a surgeon, drunk, and he kills someone. And uh, he, he's going to lose his medical license. And you're like, that's his whole career taken away. Good! <laughs> People who can shop after work, uh, at work, after lunch, and somehow do good work. Don Draper. People who can't, surgeons! <laughs> but why? Despite being born and raised in Ohio, Jack was a Florida man through and through. He attended Vanderbilt University Law School, a surprisingly good school to have produced such a terrible lawyer. He met his wife there and they moved to Florida in 1976 where he became a born again Christian. The first decade or so of his career seems to have been fairly quiet, though he quickly became embroiled in two controversies. The first involved a feud with a local radio station, WIOD. <laughs> the show is called IOD. <laughs> <laughs> like, I overdose, really? Fuck yeah! Jack had helped to convince the FCC to fine them $10,000 over some lewd parody songs that they played on their morning show. Jack, weren't you just saying how you love, like, freedom of speech and all of that stuff? Um, doesn't that extend to, you know, the actual media? They were pretty vocal in their dislike of Jack, resulting in him getting a court order to end their harassment of him. Over the eight months that followed, he documented 40,000 instances of his name being used and sued the station for $200 million, $5,000 per time they mentioned him. Um, I don't think, like, 
just mentioning someone like uh, uh, David Cameron. It's like, that is not allowed. Get a lawyer. For I don't know why David Cameron came up. I think I was like, I heard his name this morning for some godforsaken reason. Why can't we just forget David Cameron? Like the forgettable prime minister that he is. I don't think, I don't think you can just mention someone and then expect to get 5,000 likes. No, it's not. It doesn't work that way. Elon Musk would even be broke. To be fair, saying someone's name 40,000 times on air in eight months doesn't really seem like they ended their harassment, which is the singular time I will defend any of his actions. Luckily, attention will be pulled away from all of that because it was the same year that he decided to run against Janet Reno for the position of Dade County State Attorney. Seeing as Janet Reno later became the U.S. Attorney General, and I know that's important. I'm not entirely sure what are you, the U.S. Attorney... Is that one person or is that lots of people? Because isn't that guy in Billions... Um, Chuck Rhodes, isn't he an attorney general? Does that mean, like, you are the... But the US attorney general? Is that, like, America's lawyer? Like, when America takes someone to court? I don't know. Let, let's carry on. <laughs> He'd be a very busy person. Hey, what happened to my masturbator, Francesca? You got me all turned around. However, at a campaign event, Jack handed Janet a note. It was like one of those notes which kids pass to each other saying, Do you like me? with checkboxes for yes and no. But this letter was asking Janet to check off whether she was heterosexual, homosexual, or bisexual. Not okay. <laughs> Janet replied by placing her hands on, her on his shoulder and saying, I'm only interested in virar men. That's why I'm not attracted to you. <laughs> Fucking savage. There's a great subreddit called Murdered by Words. This would belong on there. Jack could not tolerate such disrespect because Janet had placed her hands on him. He filed a police report in which he accused her of battery. I mean, technically, a battery is like any sort of unwanted, like, touching and or like bum, anything like that. It's battery, right? If I if I remember correctly. The charges were thrown out and he was branded a kook, but it took two more decades before he would lose his law license. So buckle up! Following his predictable loss in the election, Jack began rallying against a social services group called Switchboard of Miami, of which Janet was a board member. He claimed that the organization was putting homosexual education tapes in public schools and needed to be stopped. <laughs> Jack, you've lost your mind. Well, I mean, unless this is something where it's like the Christians are like, I saw a show and I didn't like it. You know, where it's like, they're just like, two men were kissing in a show. I saw Brokeback Mountain. It's promoting homosexuality. It's not. <laughs> Calm down. In response to these allegations, the Florida Supreme Court ordered that Jack had to go a psychiatric evaluation. I'm not entirely sure how, but he managed to pass his evaluation. The result was that he felt justified in billing himself as the only officially certified sane lawyer in the entire state of Florida. Mate, the fact that someone said you had to take one of these tests, though, is not good. That's not good. That's like saying, you know, released felon. <laughs> released. Like, no longer in. I did my time. It's like, that doesn't mean it's better than someone who has never been a felon, does it? What are you talking about? That's not good. With his brief feud with Janet at an end, it was time for Jack to attack one of the largest purveyors of smut and anti-Christian values that he could find, the music industry. More specifically, he was going after rap music because of course he was. So you have chosen death. It was this crusade that would gain Jack some level of infamy across the country. He targeted two Live Cruise albums as nasty as they want to be, and NWA straight out of Compton. Jack tried to put pressure on the straight prosecutor to investigate if the albums flor violated Florida's obscenity laws. The prosecutor declined. Because of course he did. If the state prosecutor wasn't going to block the sale of these albums, Jack would have to do it himself. He tried to pressure local officials around the state to ban the sales of these offensive rap albums, and somehow he actually succeeded in a lot of places. Yeah, because there's a lot of old people. It's like, I don't know, if you got a collection of old people together and played them like straight out of Compton or ever and be say like, does this offend you? You'd be like, yeah, sort of like how if you asked a 13 year old what they thought of Bark, they'd probably be like, oh God, oh, ah, ah. They'd also want it banned, because people are stupid. Whenever he had to fax documents to those that would oppose him, he would include a photocopy of his driver's license, except that he'd paste a photo of Batman over his photo. It's just, that's just cringe, dude. I've sent my opponents pictures of Batman to remind them that I'm playing the role of Batman. Do you have an IQ of 70 or something? That is the, uh, what, what does that? <laughs> I've sent my opponents picture of Batman to remind them I'm playing the role of Batman. <laughs> Nerd. 
the quote continues, just like Bruce Wayne helped the police in the movie, I've had to assist the sheriff of Broward County. Seriously, I don't know how the f*** this guy passed his psyche eval, although I suppose one could argue that as a rich white dude who came from old money, Bruce Wayne would, would probably hate rap music too. What's wrong with, like, what's wrong with, I, I, I don't know, I like rap music. <laughs> what's the problem? Previously on Lost. Bell, 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 bell ends. Ultimately, the Florida Supreme Court ruled that the sheriff threatening vendors with fines for violating the laws on obscene material was unconstitutional and rap music was once again free. <laughs> for a- <laughs> YES! <laughs> I was so worried! For a little bit, Jack would of course be one of the people who vehemently opposed Time Warner for promoting Ice T song Cop Killer. He would continue with his crusade against the music industry with little to no success until 1997 when he was able to get his sights on a new target. Pearl Harbor 2. Jack's war against video games began in 1997 when he filed a lawsuit on behalf of the parents of a school shooting. According to police investigators, the 14-year-old killer had games on his computer like Doom, Quake, and Resident Evil. I, I always call that game Resident Evil. Like, residence? Like, you know, residence in an apartment building or something? Which, I don't know, but it's clearly Resident Evil. And it is Resident Evil. Fascinating tangent, Simon. Thank you. Also, you know who played Doom as a kid? Because I already mentioned it in this video. Me. Number of schools I've shot up. Zero. I don't want to sound like I'm a future serial killer, but it's fun. So, uh, well, there's one that did and one that didn't. And guess if we added them all up, all the people who played Doom, not it's just such a, it's just such a. There's a word I was going to use there, which I've recently learned it's not okay to use anymore. <laughs> don't use that word. Um, <laughs> it's just a stupid thing to say. Say it. This may really be hard for a lot of you to hear, but the evidence also showed that the 14-year-old boy had on occasion looked at pornographic web- NO! Well, forget Doom, it was all the porn he was looking at. That's right, that's what caused him to shoot up the school. Porn. <laughs> Nobody will arrest you for public indecency. That's the good thing about online. Goddamn, people are fucking dumb, right? I know it seems impossible to believe that a teenage boy would want to vigorously indulge himself in adult entertainment, but that's just the world we were living in back in the 1990s. This arsehole filed far too many lawsuits against video game companies and retailers to cover, so we'll just hit the highlights of his arguments. Of course, before that, the first thing worth highlighting is that he never won any of these cases. Oftentimes, he would forcibly insert himself into cases despite the protestations of other lawyers, and I'm pretty sure he practiced law outside of Florida illegally. Wait, you can... Oh, of course, because you have that thing where you have, um, Americans, I mean, uh, the bar exam. That's per state, right? I know this. So you just, like, you go to law school for all that time, and then you go somewhere else and you can't do law. I guess that makes sense, because, like, you can practice law in England and Wales, but I think Scots law, you need to have a Scots law license, and obviously you can't in Ireland, because that's, I mean, Northern Ireland, sure. Ooh, I don't remember, because it's law of England and Wales, I don't think that includes Northern Ireland. We see regular Ireland a separate country, so you can't practice law there. Which, okay, I get it. It kind of makes sense. Like, I guess states have, like, specific laws. America's weird, because you're, like, one big country, but you're also, like, lots of little countries shoved together. And they're also different. Like, Texas. Like, they're always like, I want to, we want to be our own country down in big state. What's it called? It's not big state. Big, big state? Big, what's Texas's, like, the shit they put on the license plate or whatever. The red state? No, that's what, that's not right. Or maybe is it? I don't know. Look, look, let's just move on. Let's move on. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I can say that he definitely had a temporary certification to practice law in another state revoked for his insane and disrespectful behavior. As for the actual arguments he had to make, other than simply not liking the games, he believed they were murder simulators. Games like Grand Theft Auto were accused of training children to murder police, and he would often write letters to police departments, trying to evoke an emotional response from them by claiming that their lives were in danger if they didn't do something to stop the proliferation of obscene material. And again, I'll just break a number of I've killed in Grand Theft Auto. Hundreds, thousands, number of cops I've killed in real life. I, it's pr pretty sure it's zero. <laughs> it's zero. It's zero. I haven't killed any police officers. <laughs> of course I fucking haven't. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, whatever this guy's name was. I already forgot. Jack the Crack. Yeah, that's it. We can remember it because 
because of course we can. There were also allegations that these games were funded by the military as a way to desensitize future soldiers to killing people on the battlefield. This is all insane, of course. Jack claimed that in every school shooting we find the kids who pulled the trigger are video gamers. That's because all kids are video gamers. The fact is millions of kids were playing these same games without killing people and research shows that these games are actually beneficial. But that didn't matter at all. <laughs> oh no, I just thought it would be neutral. But it actually, does it really reduce violence? <laughs> Shit. He had his own research that said otherwise. According to Jack, adults that play GTA are losers with no life. But when kids play these games, it causes their brains to physically develop differently. All right, wait, he was actually like, adults who play, I play GTA. Am I a loser with no life? Oh, Jack, you nailed it. Oh, no. But of all of Jack's tenuous arguments, none was more amusing than the one levied against Sony. Because Sony, makers of the PlayStation and home of these most violent video games that Nintendo wouldn't go anywhere near, were a Japanese company. He referred to Sony's assault on the minds and morals of America's children as Pearl Harbor 2. That's not okay. That's not okay. And also, it's not like they're... What are you talking about? These games are released everywhere. It's not like the Japanese don't have access to games from Sony. Or, I don't know, everyone else in the world. Like, British people, for sure. Like, I already mentioned it. Played all these games, still play these games. Love GTA. GTA is probably my favorite game. Even if his ideas were all ridiculous nonsense that had no foundation in science or reason, at least in his own mind, Jack was trying to protect the children. That's why he wanted to attempt to take down Best Buy. <laughs> He did so by exploiting his own child. Oh, Jack. Jack filmed his own 10-year-old son purchasing the M-rated title GTA Vice City. This film of his child was used to fuel his failed lawsuit against Best Buy, and I'm sure his son was even more disappointed that he didn't actually get to play the game. There's a funny thing about all that, though. When I worked at the comic store, there were M-rated books that we wouldn't sell to the kids. Once The Walking Dead started on AMC, it became a real pain in the ass too. If a kid who looked too young to buy it, the answer was no. If an adult tried to buy it for their child, we'd let them flip through it first to see what they were actually getting their kid. If someone that looked like a parent who was unlikely to personally read comic books tried to buy it alone, we'd ask if it was for them or their kid first. Really? That seems like overreach. If someone asked you, is that for your kid or for you? I'd be like, uh, none of your business, is it, Kevin? <laughs> Are you not going to sell this to me? Because I'm an adult and I want to buy it. Uh, and obviously you don't have to sell it to me. There's like no obligate, like, I don't know, people are stupid with this. They think you that shops can't refuse you service. I, I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. But what was it? So I used to work in a shop. Some woman came in and she was like, I want to buy cigarettes. And they were mispriced, like, by, I don't know, a few pounds or whatever. And she was like, you have to sell them to me at that price. And I was like, no, I don't. And she's like, you do. It's the law. And I was like, um, listen, it's not... <laughs> And I just finished law school bid. <laughs> Why are you working in news agents? It's the economy! <laughs> nah, no, no, it's just you don't have to sell people shit if they don't want to, if you don't want to. It's fine. It's like, I mean, it might not be good for business, like, because that woman will be like a right Karen around all her mates. But guess what? You're going to come back in for cigarettes because you're addicted to nicotine, aren't you? You're going to buy them anyway. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, Kevin not selling me a comic book. Jesus, Kevin. We did all that because it was easier than dealing with angry parents later, not because we were in any way legally compelled to do so. Likewise, there was... Wait, but that the parents buying it, the last example still doesn't make sense, Kevin. Likewise, there was not then, nor there is now, any law compelling Best Buy employees not to engage in such sales. It was against company policy, but some teenager working the register part-time at a giant corporation probably isn't going to give a sh the same way we did as a small business. Most importantly, you could maybe get the kid fired, but it's absolutely not something you could sue Best Buy corporate over. It was one failed lawsuit after another, but Jack was still making enough noise to get attention from the mainstream media, who was only hearing his side of the story. Online, he was a joke, constantly butting heads with video game companies and being the subject of immense ridicule. But it was the early 2000s, a time when many homes were still using dial-up internet. When Jack appeared on 60 Minutes in early 2005, most of the viewing audience didn't understand what a lying failure he was. However, it was later in 2005 when he would really make some waves. 
a modest video game proposal. In October of 2005, Jack published an open letter to the press. The title of his letter was a play on the famous Jonathan Swift essay, A Modest Proposal. But unlike Swift's original works, this one wasn't clever at all. The main target of his anger had been Take-Two Interactive, the developers behind Grand Theft Auto, Bully, and Manhunt. In the letter, Jack promised to donate $10,000 to the charity of the Take-Two's chairman choice if someone... Oh my god, that's a sentence and a half, isn't it? To the charity of the Take-Two chairman's choice. If someone made a video game to his specifications, do you know how much video games cost to make, mate? It's gonna, it's, it's more than ten grand. I swear, on the video games, it costs like a billion dollars to make these days, which is fucking mental. Jack thought this was an impossible goal because his game involved violence directed towards game developers. Sure, it's all fun and games when programmers are letting kids kill cops, but they would certainly never dare put themselves in the crosshairs, right? Oh, don't, please tell me. I mean, I mean. Tell me they actually made it. Just like, yeah, no, we're gonna sink like millions into this just to prove a point, because we're a rich game studio and f you. Actually, no, they absolutely would. Video games already had a long history of letting players kill the development team, dating all the way back to 1994 with ID Software's Doom 2, where you had to kill the company's founder, John Romero, in order to beat the game. You couldn't actually see Romero unless you used a cheat code to walk through the wall, but everybody already knew the codes because uh, they were the same as in the original Doom. Jack was, of course, unaware of this fact. He was also unaware of both how much gamers enjoy supporting charities and how much they absolutely hated him. There was nothing Jack could possibly suggest that would be too vile for a bunch of programmers to put together to prove him wrong. As for what his actual modest proposal was, I promise you it's crazier than what you were expecting. Let's go! Per Jack's specifications, the game was to center around a protagonist named Asaki Kim. Kim was the father of a fictional boy who was beaten to death with a baseball bat by a 14-year-old gamer after playing a video game about beating people to death with a baseball bat. Sh** man. Just call this game Inception. The opening cutscene of the game should show the killer receiving only life in prison. <laughs> after which Kim would vow to take his revenge. The revenge would be done in the form of grabbing a bunch of weapons, even baseball bats, especially baseball bats. <laughs> That's a quote. Even baseball bats, especially baseball bats. <laughs> Again, sometimes this guy went to a good law school, right? How did he do this with an IQ of 70? And going on a murderous rampage of video game executives, Kim was to take out the CEO of Take This, a legally distinct parody of Take Two. He was to murder the CEO, her husband, and her children, and then urinate on their brain stems. <laughs> very specific. That's some pretty dark stuff. Maybe it's not like low IQ vibes. It's like edgy eight-year-old vibes. It's like, I'm gonna urinate on your brainstem. Ah! It was a pretty long proposal and honestly just goes on like this. Jack wanted to have Kim kill every video game executive during a final murderous rampage at E3, a giant annual video game expo for industry video for industry people only. Kill the lawyers that defended the video game companies and beat up cashiers at Best Buy and GameStop while yelling, you should have checked kids' IDs. You might think that the most ironic part of this insane pitch is that Jack was asking developers to make the exact sort of game he'd spent a decade lobbying against. Or maybe you think that the real irony is that Jack, who claimed to care so much about children, was holding a charitable donation that would undoubtedly go to help children as ransom for his neurotic list of demands. You could think those things, but you would be wrong. Oh. Why would I be wrong? It seems like that's exactly what he's doing. The actual most ironic part of all of this is that unbeknownst to Jack, something nearly identical to the game he pitched was released a week before he published his open letter. It wasn't a full-on game. It was a mod for GTA San Andreas, but it was eerily similar to the modest proposal. The mod, which was titled Defamation of Character, a Jack Thompson murder simulator, only really differed in that the main character was Jack himself rather than a father of a murdered child. Jack obviously wasn't going to pay the charity over this, and they didn't ask him to. He claimed the game to be made in 2006 and by a real developer, not by a couple of kids in their parents' basements. Okay, Jack, fair enough. That's why in January of 2006, a new company named Thompson Soft. <laughs> I love it when it gets like this, you know, where it's like people just play into it so hard just to fuck with this guy because he's a prick, allegedly. Good! Good. They released a game called OK, a murder simulator. Once again, Jack refused to pay. He claims that the game did not meet his specifications, threatened to contact their lawyers, and said that his proposal had been satire. This led to the obvious question of whether or not his donation was satire as well. And if so, what exactly was so funny about promising to donate $10,000 to charity and then refusing to do so? There's nothing funny about that at all. 
It's kind of a, it's what we call a douchebag move. Jack was becoming completely unhinged, but he had a major fight left to pick. He may have been used to battling major cr game developers and their lawyers, but that could never have prepared him to take on a pair of trolling assholes and their webcomic, Penny Arcade and Jack Thompson. Penny Arcade is the brainchild of writer Jerry Holkins and artist Mike Kra Kralik. Sorry. Better known by their cartoon alter egos, Taiho Brahi and Gabe. They made their name through a combination of crude humor, brutally honest video game reviews, and not giving a fuck about toothless cease and desist orders. In 24 years, only a single comic strip has ever been taken down due to legal threats, and it was definitely not the first or last time they received such threats. Wait, now I really want to know what that one was. <laughs> Two days after Jack's ludicrous proposal, Gabe posted this on the PA website. Quote, so I got his email address and I went ahead and sent Jack a note this morning. Ten grand is pretty weak, man. Through our charity, childsplaycharity.org, gamers have given over half a million dollars in toys and cash to children's hospitals all over the country. I'll let you know if he responds. So, first off, Child's Play had only existed for two years at that point, and they pretty much only raise money starting in November leading up to Christmas each year, so half a million dollars is pretty damn good. Currently, the charity has processed over $55 million in donations. Good for them. Holy sh**. That is a lot of money. Bravo. The second of all, Jack responded. He responded almost immediately in his haste to send a message that he knew would absolutely trigger Jack. Gabe forgot the signature in his work email, had his phone number in it. Very shortly after that post, Jack gave Gabe a call. It was mostly yelling and asking if it ever personally given money to charity. He then, <laughs> bro. <laughs> He'd given like his charity had helped raise like half a million dollars worth of stuff in its first two years. <laughs> Dude. He then insinuated that his donation charity meant more than theirs because he wasn't some video game company that was flush with cash. What are you talking about? It was clearly the ravings of not only a madman, but a madman who was technically still a lawyer and may actually sue them, unlike the countless others who had threatened as much in the past. Still, Gabe wasn't satisfied. They weren't video game developers that were flush with cash. Sure, they're millionaires now, but I can't find what, they're worth, what they were worth at this time. Not that it would be reliable anyway. Yeah, the, the online like, net worth things are just like... I, you know, you used to Google those and be like, this is the gospel truth. And now, like, you could do it for me. And it's like, no, nah, none of this is true. Just, it's like, it's, it's just wildly off almost all the time. Sometimes too high, sometimes too low, but it's never, it's never right. I did what I had to do. I hope you can understand that. You lied to me. How many other lies have I been told by the council? Regardless, they definitely weren't developers, and Gabe needed to set the record straight. A second email was sent, and a second phone call was received. The second phone call was almost exclusively Jack yelling some outrageous monologue. Gabe interrupted only to ask one simple question. If somebody makes the violent game you proposed, does that mean you have to sue yourself? And Jack hung up. It took less than a week for this feud to come to a head. Tiho, the more level-headed of the two, wrote about how unstable Jack was and how threats of vague lawsuits were his thing. He also said he knew from the start that Jack was never going to make that donation. If someone made the game he demanded, he would do the lawyer thing and keep changing the goalposts, saying it was never quite good enough. That is ultimately what happened. But this was all still going down just days after the modest proposal was published. So. To clarify the timeline a little bit, on October the 10th, Jack published his modest proposal. On the 12th, the first email and phone call with Gabe took place. By the 14th, the second one had taken place, and by the 17th, Jack was faxing documents to the Seattle Police Department to try and get them to arrest Gabe and Tiho. For what? You're talking about a civil thing. Why? Where was the arrest? What are you, what are you on about? You are made of stuff. Stupid. At least he thought he was. It turns out he was faxing them to like every fax number he had, except the police. He did eventually get the documents of the police, in which he claimed some sort of orchestrated conspiracy of harassment. However, he also tipped his hands a little bit and revealed the true reason he was angry. It was attached to an alleged proof of extortion, but it showed that he was just a bitter, petty man. This alleged smoking gun was a picture, a check from Penny Arcade, from a Penny Ar from. This picture was a check from Penny Arcade Inc. in the amount of $10,000 made out to the charity of the Take-Two Chairman's Choice. The memo on the check read for Jack Thompson, because Jack Thompson won't. Oh, wow. They gave him a check that he can go and give to them. So he doesn't have to do even donate it, so it's not even his money. That's nuts. Gabe and Tiho had made a $10,000 donation in Jack's name because his personal donation had been offered as satire, and they asked for absolutely nothing in return. Oh, okay, they just donated it. Good for them. Outstanding move! 
When the Seattle police refused to take Jack seriously, he decided to go over their heads and get the FBI involved. The FBI also refused to take him seriously, because why the fuck would they? And yet, despite his modest video game proposal that attempts to waste police and FBI resources, Jack appeared on CNN that same night as an expert to discuss violence in video games. This time, it was centered around some football game he thought was too violent. Jack claimed the NFL wouldn't allow its name to be used, so that tells you something. While that's true, what it tells us is that EA Sports had an exclusive license with the NFL, and this game was not being made by EA. It was almost like the news was deliberately lying to create hysteria for ratings, but something like that could never happen. Of course not. Disbarment. Although the madness of Jack's modest proposal died down, his career obviously didn't turn around. Things mostly quietened down, though there was one notable lawsuit against Midway Games after they released Mortal Kombat Annihilation. He claimed that the company was illegally making money off his likeness. They didn't actually put him in the game, but he argued that players could use the character creation option to make someone that looked like him. This is a really stupid argument, but it's just the kind of lawyer that Jack was. In 2007, leading up to the release of GTA 4 and Manhunt 2, Take Two took the proactive step of suing Jack first. They essentially sued to prevent him from doing anything to try to damage the sales of the game. They settled out of court, but Jack caved to their demands, agreeing not to take any legal action against them, threaten legal action against them, or to accuse them of any wrongdoing as a result of their game. This agreement was supposed to shut him up, but of course it didn't. When GTA 4 was released, Jack called it the gravest assault upon children in this country since polio. <laughs> me man just shut the fuck up and go away and i get the feeling that's about what's about what's about to happen feel free to go off and die in a ditch somewhere allegedly he couldn't legally file a lawsuit, but he unsuccessfully encouraged others to do so on his behalf. We focus mainly on his video game vendetta today, but he had some other pretty epic adventures as well. In the early 1990s, he tried to get the entire Florida bar declared unconstitutional. He claims that the bar had a pro-gay, humanist, liberal agenda, and that they were acting out a vendetta against him because of his religious beliefs. Didn't they say he was a born-again Christian? Like, saying you're persecuted as a Christian in America is like, that's insane. <laughs> I mean, of course, you can be persecuted by, like, an individual or, like, a group, but you are the majority. That's like saying, oh, you're persecuting the government. It's like, no, when you're the big, powerful thing, you don't get to say you're being persecuted. Shut the f*** up. That was the same argument he made in 2007 when the Florida bar began disbarment proceedings against Jack. It was all religious persecution and nothing to do with his shitty conduct. Jack was charged with 31 violations, including making false statements to tribunals, disparaging and humiliating litigants and other lawyers, and improperly practicing law outside of Florida. There was a literal mountain of evidence against him. Literal mountain? Literal mountain? A total of 2,400 pages of transcripts and 1,700 pages of exhibit had to be reviewed. Okay, so a large binder. So it took over a year for the judge to reach a verdict. Jack was found guilty of 27 of the accounts uh, in May of 2008, and in June, it was sentencing time. The rules vary state by state, but in Florida, disbarment lasts for five years. The prosecutor was seeking enhanced disbarment penalty that would lengthen the sentence to 10 years on account of Jack's repeated misconduct and refusal to accept any responsibility for his actions or admit any wrongdoing. He began the hearing by requesting to make a speech, but his request was denied. I'd like to speak, Your Honor. Denied. <laughs> ah! His response to us to call the proceedings at Kangaroo Court and walk out. Well, good news. You don't have to worry about courts anymore because you got disbarred. Ah! That's a bold strategy, Cotton. And it didn't pay off. Jack was fined roughly $43,000 and was permanently disbarred. Of course, none of this was happening above board. It was all just religious persecution for his unusual born-again Christian beliefs. That's why in 2009, Jack announced he'd return to practicing law, saying that he was never disbarred and all, the other and all the other orders against him were legally null. He dared the Florida Bar to get a court order to stop him from practicing law. That's the same strategy employed by President Andrew Jackson, who famously said of Supreme Court Justice John Marshall, he made his decision now let him enforce it when opting to ignore a Supreme Court ruling. Of course, taking cues from America's worst president, in my opinion, I don't... Andrew Jackson? He's quite famous, isn't he? I don't know much about him, though. I'm sure I made a biographics video about him. Some of the people will be like, you don't know anything about Andrew Jackson? I don't know. Isn't he on one of the monies? I feel like he's on one of the monies. Jackson's. That sounds like he's on the money. Like, I don't know, five? Is he on the five? I don't know. <laughs> Jack dared the Florida bar to stop him from practicing law. Are you challenging me? And they did. So where is he now? 
Jacker since retired, had a non-Vader heart attack and still absolutely hates video games. He mainly plays golf every day to enjoy his retirement rather than crusading against games, but his opinion hasn't changed. He believes he was 100% right in what he was doing, but that he was too angry and went about things wrong. I'll leave you with Jack's own words on the matter. You could be a felon in Florida and get your law license, but you can't be Jack Thompson and ever get it back. Thank you for watching. Don't use that word. Um, <laughs> it's just a stupid thing to say. Say it.